Here we go. So this is the blog post in question. Set your questions and uh, about H.264 license cost once and for all. Hopefully. And it starts off, for anyone listening, it starts off with uh, the Billy, it's time you learn about money meme. And the importance of, oh wait, fine. And then he chucks the money into the H.264 uh, license machine. So, I'm not going to read the entire thing here, but there are a couple of key takeaways. In a nutshell, the license fee is required by the patent managing group MPEG LA, which I've mentioned before, if you fall into two groups. Distribute H.264 encoder or decoder, paid or free, software or hardware, or distribute content in H.264 format, except free internet videos. This is a uh, not related to our issue. It is a whole separate issue. This is more of a issue that like YouTube, Netflix, and things like that would happen. I would have to deal with. So distribute the capability of creating or consuming H.264 videos. Licensing is required if you can if you give consumers the ability to create, aka encode, or a or watch, aka decode H.264 videos. So on the hardware vendor side, this applies to device vendors that ship hardware H.264 encoder or decoder with their devices, like Apple, Samsung, Dell, HP, Sony for their smartphones, computers, DVD players, and whatever else you might have out there. A hardware encoder slash decoder may go through the factories of many companies along the supply chain before it's sold to consumers. Only the company that puts the brand on the product has to pay the license fee, e.g. Samsung for a smartphone with hardware H.264 encoder instead of Qualcomm who actually builds the chips. And this is where you actually start seeing a really uh, big issue with the way that this uh, license fee is paid. So, as for the software vendors, this group also includes software vendors whose products contain H.264 encoder or decoder, like Microsoft's Windows OS, Adobe's Flash Play. I don't know, when was this written? 2020. Why, was, why did you include Flash Player in 2020? Uh, Apple's QuickTime Player and Google's Android OS. Why didn't you just like include iOS? <laughs> Something relevant besides fucking Flash Player. Uh, note this rule applies even if the software is free of charge. Uh, but if it's open source and you distribute the source code instead of the compiled binary, you don't have to pay the license fee. So yeah, if you're just distributing, like Gen 2, for example, Gen 2 would distribute a um, source version of FFmpeg, and the license fee is not applicable there. Uh, but if you distribute a binary, like on, you know, Fedora might, then yeah, you would, or you can remove the functionality. Uh, this is why people ho adapt. This is why people host downloadable pre-built binaries of open source software like FFmpeg in countries outside of the US where the same patent laws don't apply. Right. So here is where we start seeing the issue. There's an example right down the bottom here. Finally, let's. I think that was, that was all. Uh, yeah, no, it's mainly just, like, about pricing in here. Um, finally, let's have a quiz. Consider the following scenario. Ada recorded the video on her iPhone and used a mobile app called Wii Studio to edit and publish it to the video platform iTube. Wii Studio invoked video toolbox provided by the, uh, uh, by iOS to decode H.264 video, compressed it with Wii Studio's own encoder, and uploaded the video to the iTube server. iTube employed a public cloud transcoding service from vCompress to further reduce the size of the video. When, uh, when another user, Bob, watched the video in iTube app, in the iTube app, why is there a word missing there? On his Android device, iTube decoded the video using an open source software decoder created by OpenCodeDeck. CodeDeck? CodeDeck. So among the, the companies that appeared in the story, Apple with their iPhone and iOS, Wii Studio with the video editor, iTube with the video platform, vCompress, the cloud transcoding platform, Google with Android, and Open Codec, the open source decoder, which ones do not need to pay the H.264 license fee? And the answer to this is Open Codec. So everybody else in the chain needs to pay it. This is where, like, this is a big reason why it's a mess. So, Apple needs to pay it for the iPhone and for the iPhone hardware and the iPhone software. Then the developers of this 
like application need to pay it as well, then the app, the, like everyone else needs to pay with the exception of Open Codec. So the reason why they don't have to pay from the way that I understand this is that that is, um, wait, wait, where was the example again? Is that because it's being used by, by iTube. So this, this isn't the application being used directly. It's being bundled as part of iTube, right? So iTube is the user facing brand and that brand is the one that needs to pay for the license. That's the way that I understand it. And this is where it gets like really weird with the uh, with the GPUs. So Nvidia, AMD, all of that, you sh like you would expect that because they are the ones who made the GPU, they would pay the licensing fee because it's an AMD GPU, but it's also a gigabyte GPU or an EVGA v a GPU or it's uh whoever else out there, uh, gig, uh, did I say gigabyte? It, it's the add-in board partners GPU as well. So AMD and NVIDIA can actually pass the, uh, pass the issue of paying for the license onto the add-in board partner. But then the add-in board partner can say that they're not going to pay it and then pass it on to the OEM system builder because, you know, you're buying a system that is branded as an HP system or an Alienware system or a Dell system or anything else out there. So it's still technically fulfilling that that uh, issue of, as we saw near the start here, up here somewhere, uh, a hardware encoder slash decoder may go through many factories of many companies along the supply chain before it's sold to consumers. Only the company that puts the brand on the product has to pay the license. So who's putting the brand on an NVIDIA GPU? Is it NVIDIA? Is it the add-in board partner? Or is it the OEM system builder? The answer is all of them. So they keep passing it along the chain. And in some cases, it, doesn't, it just doesn't get paid. So by the time it gets to the consumer, no one has paid for the licensing fee. And you can find this information out by going and uh, looking in... You should have some sort of like licensing documentation for whatever hardware you bought. Or you can probably find it online and things like that. You may find that you don't actually have that hardware license in the first place because no one actually paid for it. It's such a mess of a situation. Like, US patent law, US software licensing, it's, it's a fucking disaster. And it's a beautiful disaster. It's such... Like, it, 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 it absolutely sucks for anyone like really involved in the software development uh, development space. But when it comes to, like, an entertainment perspective, it's actually pretty fun. <laughs> At least for people like me that get a kick out of just the absolute mess that software can be.